it makes me want to ask you about a digital project actually that you're doing. So can you talk a little bit about that? Right, right. So um, when, when you uh, write a book on something, uh, there is probably half of the material that goes into the book uh, doesn't make it. Uh, half of the material that you come up with in generating the book doesn't go into the book itself. You, you have a, a leftover. And uh, what you can often do is uh, write a commentary uh, of, that, of that ancient work and just use it, you know, use your uh, unused material kind of as the foundation. And if you're lucky, then a commentary hasn't been written on that work for a while, uh, and you, you have some rationale to do it. And so I, I thought, oh, this would be a nice thing to do. I, there are a lot of other things I want to say about the education of Cyrus that didn't go into my, my book. But then I, I sort of stepped back and I thought, like, well, uh, the education of Cyrus is such a complex work. Uh, there are tons of things I don't know about it. There are tons of things I may never know about it uh, because it takes so many different, uh, you, you have to be an expert in so many different fields to really appreciate this work because it's written by uh, a fourth century Athenian author, Xenophon, but it's about a uh, sixth century Persian king. And so there are all issues of uh, Achaemenid archeology, span Achaemenid history, uh, Persian uh, oral history, uh, fourth century Greek prose, philosophical prose, uh, contemporary Athenian history. There's just so much uh, in, in this work, even though the work is ostensibly a very simple and straightforward mm -hmm. guide to how to be a good leader. Because usually I think people think about Xenophon and they're thinking, this is easy reading. Right. right? That's sort of yeah. the, the Absolutely. Yeah. response. Absolutely. Xenophon is often seen as the, the third semester equivalent of the Latin author Caesar, who's just, you know, just a chance to uh, sort of test your, your grammar and, and enjoy uh, Xenophon's very simple and elegant style, but it turns out that that uh, simplicity is much more complex and it's, it's hard to obtain that simplicity. So there, there were so many questions emerging uh, from, from my closer reading of the text that I realized I would really like to do something more collaborative. Like there, there are experts out there who know far more than I do about many aspects of this text, and so I thought do something collaborative uh, these days, uh, if you're going to do something collaborative, if you're going to aggregate all of the, the wise things and intelligent things that have been said about a work, it's, it's best to do it online. And so uh, fortunately, I, I had some uh, friends and colleagues who are willing to think through with me what a, a collaborative online commentary might look like. And so the, the, the end result is, uh, it's, not, it's not an end, uh, it's still an ongoing thing, but the end result is uh, Cyrus's Paradise, this collaborative online uh, commentary on the, on the education of Cyrus designed to uh, not only aggregate all of the, the known things about this text, uh, but, but enable scholars to engage in discussion in real time, uh, to enable them to share their mm -hmm. the results of their research in real time, mm -hmm. uh, to, to uh, edit one another and, uh, and really just create a, a living discussion, an ongoing living discussion about what this text is about and hopefully bring together some scholars who wouldn't necessarily get to talk with one another very much. I mean, for the longest time, the education of Cyrus was seen very much as fourth century Greek prose. And mm -hmm. so it was, you know, kind of a lesser, you know, less than Plato. Xenophon is always less than Plato or less than Thucydides or less uh -huh. than Herodotus. And now we're, we're really seeing that, uh, you know, he's so much more, but we just never had the the, the, tool, the, the we, we didn't have the team, really. We didn't have the, the collaborative working group to see uh, all the magic going on there. And so I see, you know, you're using digital tools. You're using uh, really intergenerational uh, collaborative research that's international, too, right? Because this is a project that can involve uh, scholars, you know, world-class scholars, and even um, students who are first starting to work on their Greek. Uh, you have tools on your site to allow people to... Um, practice reading, hearing the Greek, right? Make commentary, make notes. Um, so really this is a tool for everybody. Right, really no, 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 interested. very much. The idea was to draw in uh, Greek students at the earliest um, stage of their education. Uh, and, 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 the, and, and by doing so, uh, that, that would entice scholars to say, well, here, here's, a, here's a venue where my comments are actually going to be read and appreciated. Mm -hmm rather than buried away in some journal that only 50 people know about or something. But it's, you know, all, so, so scholars have the opportunity to feature their ideas and feature uh, their own work. And students are hopefully drawn to it because this is a chance to, to sort of play in the big leagues or at mm -hmm. least watch, to, to go to a major league game 
uh, and see where see where ideas are being uh, talked about and, and hashed out. So it's, it, intergenerational is exactly the right word there. And we really envisioned this as a soup to nuts kind of experience where you start out uh, with just a little bit of Greek. And um, the interesting thing is every every new scholar who comes to the text, uh, will, who, who comes to the commentary, will see will, will experience a different commentary than even the one I've experienced because there are new new comments, there are new ideas. And there's a chance to make new connections that no one has seen so far. So it, it's meant to be very inviting in that way. So can we talk?